Hello everyone, this is an extremely important lesson. It catches students out a lot. So normal force, we know that normal force is a force that acts from the surface onto the object and its goal is to make sure that the object stays on the ground. So have a look at the following. In situation number one over here, we know how to calculate normal force because the only forces acting down would be gravity and so that has to be balanced by the normal force and so the normal force will be equal to gravity and so the normal force would be equal to 5 multiplied by 9.8 which is 49 newtons very easy we've done that many times here's where things get a bit interesting okay so the downwards force would still be gravity there is still normal force but you've got to look at this force now now because that force is going in a random direction we need to remember that it's actually got components it's got a vertical component, so I'll just call that Y, and it's also got a horizontal component, which I'll call X. So if we look in the vertical direction, we've got gravity, we've got our normal force, but we also have our vertical component of that force. Oh, and I haven't even given a number. Let's say it is 10 newtons, and this one is 10 newtons. So now the gravity will balance the normal force and the Y component of that force. They must all be equal to each other because otherwise the object would go into the floor or it would start lifting off the ground. So let's first draw ourselves a nice little triangle over here and we're looking for the Y. Notice how if I put the Y here or if I put the Y over here, it doesn't matter. And so we know that if I have to enlarge that triangle, we've got 10 Newtons as the hypotenuse, we've got an angle of 30, we're looking for Y. And so if we use Sokotoa, that's opposite, that's hypotenuse, and so that's sin. And so sin 30 is y over 10. And so if you go work out y, you're going to get 10 sin 30, and that's 5 newtons. So this force here is 5 newtons. Gravity is 5 times 9.8, which is 49. So that means that the normal force would have to be 44 newtons. Why? Because 44 plus 5 is 49 and then it balances out gravity and so the object will not start floating or sinking into the ground and so your normal force in a situation like this is equal to gravity minus the Y component of that force I'm just gonna call it FY let's see if this makes sense so your normal force is equal to gravity which was 49 minus this Y component which was 5 newtons, and so your normal force is 44. Another way to think about this is that the goal of the normal force is simply to help make sure that the object doesn't fall through the ground. So what's trying to make the object fall through the ground? Well, that's gravity. So now we need to look at this force over here. Because it's acting at an upwards direction, it's helping the normal force. So the normal force doesn't have to work as hard to keep the object from falling through the ground. And that is why the normal force is only 44. It normally has to be 49, but because of its friend over here helping it, it can be a little bit less. Now let's look at the situate, the last one. So that was number two. Now we are number three. So we need to look at all the forces. So once again, we've got gravity acting down. Now if you look at the orientation of this force, if we draw ourselves a triangle, it's acting downwards and to the left. So if I had to enlarge that triangle over here, we've got 10 Newtons here. We've got a 30 degree angle and we're looking for the Y component. And so once again, we're going to use sin. And so you're going to say sin 30 is equal to Y over 10 and you would end up with Y equaling 5 again. But now that 5 Newtons is acting downwards. And so we've got gravity acting down and you've got the Y component of that 10 Newton acting downwards and so that's 5 Newtons and so poor normal force is going to have to work extra hard now because it's got to keep those two forces balanced and so gravity is equal to 49 and so the normal force is now going to have to be 54 Newtons why? because 5 plus 49 is 54 and so the downwards forces must always balance the upwards forces and so this force over here is causing the object to be pushed more into the ground and so the normal force has to work 
even more to keep the box from going through the ground. And so guys, here's the summary. When it's just an object resting, the normal force balances out gravity. When you have a force like this, that is causing the object, it doesn't lift off the ground, but it, it helps the normal force a little bit. So the normal force doesn't have to work as hard, and so the normal force is only 44. When you have a force like this, which is in a downwards direction, then it pushes the object into the ground, and so the poor normal force has to work even harder. So in summary, normal force here is equal to gravity. Normal force here is equal to gravity minus the y component of the force, and the normal force here is equal to gravity plus the y component. So what's nice is that normal force is always going to have it's always going to be equal to gravity and then you're either going to minus or plus the y component of the applied force. Now what's extremely important and very interesting is that we know that to calculate friction you use the coefficient multiplied by the normal force. So in a situation like number two your normal force because you're minusing your normal force becomes less and so if you had to find the friction if this value becomes less, then your friction will become less. So here, friction becomes less. Now that makes sense. Look what this force is doing. It's almost lifting the box a little bit. You wouldn't see it lifting with your naked eye. But if you had to see on a microscopic level, remember we said that friction looks like this. Well, what you would see on a microscopic level is that the teeth of the box are going to be lifted slightly out of these little grooves over here and so the friction which is the resistance will be less. If we look over here your normal force becomes larger and so your friction actually becomes more. So friction is equal to more. Now the reason for that is if we look on the microscopic level because that this force is, is pushing the object further down those teeth are going to dig further into the ground and so the resistance or the friction is going to increase. So I trust that that makes sense, guys, and I'll see you in the next lesson.